So I have been promoting my music using the Facebook ad platform for almost two years now. And if you want to see how it's going and my results, you should see the video I have linked below this uh, video here. I have been paying to promote my music every month, different amounts depending on how much I get paid from my job. I also earn now around 70 to 90 dollars a month from DistroKid that is added to that promotion budget. So usually I have a total monthly cost of anything from 150 to 300 dollars set aside to music promotion, at least up until today. My campaigns are using Facebook, Instagram ads, and I have been running them for every month for over a year now, but I have decided to pause my pay promotions for a while and I'm going to talk about the reasons in this video and the most important reason is coming now. Just to clarify I'm not saying that paid music promotion doesn't work because it really does but uh, I have a few reasons here. The biggest reason is that I don't have good enough music or I don't feel I have good enough music. I have a few tracks that for me have done pretty good in streaming. I have a track that is nearing 300,000 streams now. I also have a few tracks around 50, 60,000 streams. So that's really good for my at least my person but my latest productions I've been producing since then have not been the same in terms of uh, numbers to have a successful campaign you really need to have quality music that can stand besides other popular tracks in the same genre let's say in a Spotify playlist for example and if the quality or uh, maybe the vibe or the idea of the track isn't good enough the promotion campaign will likely also reflect that and not be that effective it is also generally generally recommended in this field that you should release music on a regular basis and what's that a regular basis well it's at least once every month if you can up that to let's say every two weeks that's even better so to keep the momentum going i have been <laughs> trying to do this but honestly it's uh, difficult to keep the quality high enough and uh, i'm just not able to keep up with that schedule. I have literally run out of tracks to promote and when I start thinking I need to finish these two tracks because I need to upload them and promote them when I start up Ableton Live and start producing some music, that's not something I can stand behind and that's not really uh, what I am trying to do here. You know, I'm, I'm not against a little pressure, you know, you have to finish your tracks. I know everything around that, but I can't keep up with this kind of release schedule on the fly at least because I mean I have a day job work you know work life balance is a thing so that is why I am currently set setting a pause to paid music production and I'm not quitting it I'm just pausing it and I want to make this video because people might expect updates and so forth so moving forward I need to have a catalog of at least 10 to 20 high quality tracks have those tracks finished ready to go with artwork ads creative and everything until i start my promotion campaigns again when i have all that scheduled up i, ca I can schedule everything out put everything on a calendar, automate as much as possible. You can automate the uh, ad delivery in, uh, for example, Meta Facebook. You can automate the uh, release date when you upload to DistroKid. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do beforehand if you at least have the catalog of tracks. So when I have that, I will, uh, it will give myself, uh, let's say a year so I can just let everything run its course. And that's uh, the strategy I'm going to focus on moving forward, I think. And uh, it might uh, take me a long time because I have to make the tracks first of, first of all. And, you know, it's going to be a part of uh, the videos and my YouTube channel as well. It's not like I'm disappearing. I'm talking about other stuff and music promotion. Then we have the ad prices. I uh, see that my ads are actually getting more expensive. So there is a financial component to this as well they are getting more expensive i mean i have had tracks with conversions as low as 16 cents per conversion and if i turn on the same ads today without any changes i haven't changed the ad the graphics or anything i and let it run for a week or a half or something like that i'm lucky if i can see it go below 30 cents per conversion now so so the prices have doubled in some cases i also see that with newer ads 
uh, I can't seem to get the prices down on uh, on these ads uh, so I need to just use some time and investigate what's going on really and I'm only using Facebook meta ads for promotions you can also pay to be included in some playlists use fiverr but that is not something i want to be involved with mostly due to uh, security reasons and the possibility of getting fake and botted streams i would rather have zero streams than fake ones and risk losing my account on distrokid or on spotify or or some other streaming platform and this ties in to the today's uh, streaming climate it feels like we get reports every day about someone that have gotten their distro kid or account or suspended or all of their music is taken down from Spotify without any warning. If you want to try to find out why this is happening, you can of course ask the customer support of DistroKid or TuneCore or whatever. It seems like the support have been difficult to work with for these artists. Uh, they don't answer questions of why a certain thing has been taken down and you in most cases just get this kind of generic lawyer kind of uh, default. Uh, generic answer when you ask the customer support and that's not something you you, you want when, when I mean your livelihood is taken down and one of them uh, there is a lot of examples but you have for example this guy called Ben Jordan he is a pretty popular youtuber but he is also a real musician with a huge back catalog and, and history and uh, he woke up one day to his entire catalog removed I think he has over 20 albums a huge amount of songs and I don't know, I think he had a hundred thousand streams a day or something. I don't know. It's an, an entire story behind this and you can find it if you Google it uh, on his Twitter, I think. But eventually he got his track back. It's also probably helped to be a person that a lot of people know about. As far as I know, he haven't promoted his catalog or anything, but uh, he still got taken down for fraudulent streams. But let's say that happens to me. I'm no big artist, I'm no big YouTuber, I can kind of leverage a uh, influencer thing to get things on the right track. And honestly, I don't think you sh really should be needed to do that anyway. So I am following this space, I'm taking a wait position now to see how things unfold. And if Spotify and DistroKid come out with some more information in regards of this, or maybe they can give some best practices to people on how you should promote your music it would be nice if they could uh, maybe come out and uh, talk a little bit about that i mean i don't want to use 300 dollars a month on something that might get removed uh, it's just money down the drain and uh, i have a lot of other <laughs> holes to put that money into so i will still post a video now and then uh, posting earning updates uh, but without promotion. So that's going to be a little interesting to see how the residual streams is working from my ad campaigns I have been running. Do I get anything in streams even without running ads? Yeah, I think some amount of streams will be there. So if you're interested, I can do reports on that on some points in the future and let me know below if that's something you want to see uh, i'm also in discovery mode i've got in that in spotify that means that spotify can promote my music their own way but they take 30 percent of the stream earnings so i'm going to get some small incomes from that as well and yeah i'm not going to stop promoting my music but uh you know i i'm focusing on what's giving me the best return here now and it's just making tracks and I, I have to make have to make like 10 or 20 tracks and have everything ready and when I have everything that ready there then I can start creating the promotions and uploading to Spotify and things like that. In terms of promotion I'm also going to use Instagram, TikTok and I mean post reels when I'm working on tracks in the studio here, demos, working progresses, things like that. And let's say I post a reel, an Instagram reel that gets, I don't know, viral or I mean gets more views that than, than I usually do, then there might be something with that particular song. I might uh, then perhaps try to promote that one and see what is happening. So. It's not like I'm ending promotion and it's not like I'm 
but I'm trying to kind of uh, organizing uh, the thing a little bit better. So and to give myself some breathing room, some more time to just focus on the actual music, having fun with gear and synthesizers and yeah, be uh, allow myself to <laughs> make shitty tracks and not to do anything about them and don't have have to release them and things like that i hope this was interesting leave any questions and comments below see you in the next one